Albrecht Dürer is universally regarded as one of the greatest printmakers in the history of art. He set a standard against which the history of European printmaking can be measured. To appreciate Dürer's accomplishments in printmaking, we can look at his 1512 engraving, Christ Carrying the Cross. This work evidences both Dürer's technical dexterity and his reconceptualization of what a print could be. Dürer's technical skills are manifested both in the pictorial realism that he was able to achieve and in the visual fluidity of his line. In fact, Dürer's innovation in printmaking resulted in part from the relationship he was able to establish between the depictive and design functions of his printed line. We will come back to this point in a moment. Dürer's conceptual inventiveness as a printmaker was an extension of his technical practice. In his work, printmaking was elevated to the equal of painting in its capacity to visualize the sacred. Our interest here is in how Dürer's inventions as a printmaker contributed to his development of the devotional narrative image. In a previous video, looking at Christ's entry into Jerusalem, we observed how the devotional narrative image did more than illustrate the subject. Durer's art sought to establish a personal connection between the viewer and Christ. This video explores how Durer's method of printmaking attempts to make the sacred more directly present for the viewer. Christ carrying the cross demonstrates how the purpose of printmaking for Durer was to make his sacred subject more visually immediate and spiritually accessible to the viewer. In this engraving, the figure of Christ with the cross over his shoulder is being pulled through the city of Jerusalem by some rough-looking tormentors and soldiers. The Virgin Mary, John, and other followers of Christ are positioned at the far left. These figures are compositionally cut off from Christ by a strong diagonal line. Durer uses the cross itself to visually isolate Christ from those who mourn him. A kneeling woman is in the lower left corner. She is turned away from us and faces Christ. She is Saint Veronica, who according to Christian legend was a follower of Christ. As he was being led to Calvary, Veronica wiped Christ's bloody face with a cloth. Again according to legend, Christ's true image or Vera Icon, was miraculously transferred onto this cloth, which is known as the Veil of Veronica or the Sudarium. Images of Veronica holding the Sudarium were very popular in Northern European art, including works by Durer. Before proceeding further with looking at Durer's Christ carrying the cross, we should very briefly describe his printmaking process. To make this engraving, Durer took a flat metal plate and using a tool with a pointed tip, cut grooves into the plate. After ink was spread across the plate, the plate was wiped clean so that only ink residing in the grooves was left. When a sheet of paper was pressed against the plate, the ink was transferred. The resulting print on the paper is a mirror image of what was drawn on the plate. The point to make here is that the print image that we see is composed of a vocabulary of lines. Durer advanced the language of printmaking through his expansion of the range and complexity of this vocabulary of the printed line. The shape of each groove in the plate, the width, depth, angle, and direction of each groove all contribute to the character of the printed line. Durer was able to command this process with considerable subtlety. Durer's mark making gives his subjects visual immediacy. Regrettably, this impact, which is visceral in the presence of the actual print on paper, is largely lost in digital reproduction incorporated into video. Looking closely at Durer's print, we can observe the expressive potential of each printed line. Marks that he achieved through his intricate cutting of grooves into the surface of the plate. The vibrancy of Durer's line creates the complexity of spiritual life that we can read in Christ's face. 
These visual marks are at once graceful and coarse, fluid and weighty, eloquent and energetic. They describe Christ's inner state as both tormented and tender. The spiritual intensity of his expression locks the viewer's attention onto Christ. In Christ Carrying the Cross, Durer translated this vocabulary of lines into a sense that the viewer has of being spiritually joined with Christ in this moment. For example, look at how Durer was able to visually describe how Christ is being pulled. As Christ looks back towards his mother and followers, a man in the lower right grabs the neck of Christ's robe. As a result, Christ's robe is pulled tightly over his shoulder. Durer's capacity to visualize the physical force with which Christ is being dragged along is the result of his printed line. However, beyond their depictive function, Durer's lines also have a visual integrity of their own, an expression of life that is independent of the subject that they depict. The very same lines that create the visual illusion of Christ's robe being pulled across his body also have a compositional function. Individually and collectively, these lines point towards the lower right. This visually directs the viewer's reading of the composition. The compositional direction of these lines is independent of the role that they have in creating the illusion of a piece of cloth being pulled tightly over a shoulder. The fact that both the illusion of the subject and the composition of the print move in the same direction makes this a successful work of art. However, that does not take away from the fact that Durer's lines have both pictorial and compositional purposes. Durer's strategy of printmaking intensified the bond between the subject depicted and the visual means by which the subject is depicted. This is directly responsible for the visceral effect Durer's prints as devotional narrative images can have on the viewer. How Sacred Meaning proceeds from this relationship between the depictive and compositional life of Durer's line can also be seen in the figure of Veronica. She is clearly a three-dimensional figure. Even under her heavy cloak, we can see evidence of her form. However, these lines that describe her elbow also have a compositional purpose. Notice how these lines move diagonally from the lower left towards the upper right. If we look at these lines within the larger composition, we can see how Durer used these lines to visually direct the viewer's eye towards Christ. Durer's lines serve a double purpose. They simultaneously describe the presence of a figure and participate in the composition's directing of the viewer's eye towards Christ. Durer's success as a printmaker resulted from his ability to unify the picture as an illusion of the subject and the printed image as a composition of lines. He accomplished this through his creative command of the printed line. His development of a vocabulary of lines was foundational to Durer's creation of devotional narrative images. The character of his line made the sacred more directly present for the viewer. Albrecht Durer's 1512 engraving, Christ Carrying the Cross, evidences how his success as a printmaker proceeded from the inner connection that he was able to cultivate between the subject depicted and the visual language through which the subject is depicted. Looking at Christ expelling the moneylenders in the next video, we will further explore how Dura was able to create meaning out of this relationship between the subject of the picture and the visual structure of the printed image. In the intimacy that he established between his print medium and biblical subject, Durer accomplished nothing less than a reinvention of the potential of the print as a devotional narrative image to visualize the sacred.